who would you pick? I said, John Charles, centre half, or John Charles, centre forward. Take a pick. Fantastic when you think that we've played 38 matches, only lost two, 61 points, and Liverpool are still behind us. And Clark going in, and Alan Clark has put Leeds ahead. <laughs> to the right, there's the Duca, he scored this time, and it is his first goal for Leeds United. Leeds have turned it around, Leeds are in front, it's captain Jermaine Beckford with the goal, and there ends Leeds United, yeah. League One well, nightmare. And welcome to a brand new era at Ellen Road. This team never gives up, this team are just awesome. Welcome. Ellen Road is looking resplendent, if just a little bit damp, because much like last Saturday, it's absolutely scything it down on game day. Pitch is looking immaculate, um, but those in the stands around us, another full house, of course, here at Ellen Road, are well covered up where there's the even the vaguest chance of being exposed to the elements this afternoon. We're looking forward to... An important game for Leeds United. Queen's Park Rangers, the visitors this afternoon. And Leeds, well, it's about getting back, in a sense, to winning ways, isn't it? After two draws on the road, it would be good to add to what looked like two half-decent results, given the form of the two teams that Leeds were playing. If Leeds could pick up the win here, that would really, um, that would really enhance the work that's been done in those two away games. Ben Parker alongside me as ever. Ben, confident? Yeah, good afternoon, Bryn. Good afternoon, everyone else. I am confident, actually. Um, seeing the team news as well, Tyler Roberts coming in for his first start. I just think getting an extra body closer to Patrick Bamford, who's obviously shaking off a reported knock that he had in training. But I, th I think he's always um, going to make this game today. But um, no, I am confident. And you mentioned about the rain again, Bryn. I think there's a song where it seems to take the weather with you everywhere you go. <laughs> something along those lines. There is but, a song um, like that, yeah. But no, I think... Um, Today's game and also the game next week as well. Two home games. It's going to be. It's I an opportunity, vital. isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's an opportunity. It's a, it's a big opportunity, and I think the league's shaping up this year. Where if any team can grab it by a scruff of the neck and go on a run of wins, to string them, string a few together, similar to what we did last year when we've got seven wins on the bounce. I think we did something similar like that this season. We could stretch clear at top, at top of the pack, but um, now all the focus has got to be on today because take take QPR like they can turn you over because they do commit bodies forward and QPR's away record is better than their home record they've won four on their travel so far this season and they're just behind Leeds in terms of the points gathered on their travel so they, they, they'll come here with a, a game plan that I presume is going to be pretty positive isn't it? And watching the um, videos of them so far this year especially away from home they commit bodies into the box which is quite rare for a team to do that and you mentioned the away record better than the home again it's unusual they do score quite a lot of goals, but on the flip side, they concede quite a number as well. They try and get the full-backs forward, so the transitions, the turnover is going to be even more important today from our part because there's going to be space to utilise. They're not really confident across the back four, including the goalkeeper as well, so where the chances do come, if we're ruthless, it could, it could be a good afternoon for us. That's the absolute element. I mean, every conversation that surrounds Leeds United currently revolves around... Can they start taking their chances, doesn't it? Because every other element appears to be pretty much in place currently. That's the one thing just lacking. Yeah, but I thought the manager came out this week and spoke really well about it. He obviously mentioned that he's of the, 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 the way aware of it, but um, the, the, the key for us and the key for, for the players, the manager said he's got every confidence the players finally converting it. And the players do have that belief speaking to him. They just know it's round the corner where everything is going to click, where the good build-up play does convert into more goals. And if that happens, we're such a force to be reckoned with this year. Let's hope it happens this afternoon. The two teams line up now and they go through the rituals that uh, precede the kick-off. Leeds United will be all in white, as you would anticipate. Queen's Park Rangers... Now then, what do we describe this away strip as? It's not that <laughs> different to Leeds kit. I've got to be honest with you. If you squint, you might uh, have a little difficulty distinguishing between the two teams here because it's... What is that? 
What is that colour? Mint? Is it mint? <laughs> mint. I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll stick. We'll stick with the mint. But um, yes, yeah, so someone was just told in the very 80s, and I, I, I agree with that. Yeah, it's pastel anyway. Let's have a look at the Leeds United lineup. As already suggested, Tyler Roberts gets his first league start of the season. But the big news is that Eddie Nketiah has picked up what is being described as a lower abdominal injury and is not going to be taking part today. There was an anticipation that he might even start the game today, but it's Bamford who starts for Leeds United. They also have a problem with Alioski out as well, so they had to make a number of changes, and so the Leeds United lineup has Cooper back in the starting 11 as the captain as well, and good to see Pablo Hernandez amongst the potential replacements this afternoon. Queen's Park Rangers manager Mark Warburton, he made a few changes off the back of a disappointing home defeat at the hands of Brentford on Monday night. And it's interesting to see that Naki Wells, we expect to line up up front with the returning Jordan Hoogill, who served a one-game suspension. So we are looking at QPR probably having the two players up top for this game this afternoon. Referees in the centre circle with Liam Cooper, and shortly to be joined by the QPR captain Grant Hall, goal scorer for them on Monday evening. And then we'll be ready for the off as the rain continues to pour down here at Ellen Road. It's been a very wet last few hours. In fact, it's been a very wet last few weeks. As the referee sends the uh, mascots back towards the tunnel, they'll be glad to get the coats back on again. It's not too cold. It's a fairly mild afternoon. Although I am sporting the big winter coat, <laughs> otherwise known as the beast. <laughs> Play has to drop your coat in again, Bryn. Got to get the coat on. He's eating me out of house and home. <laughs> so we ready, we're ready, almost ready for the start of the game. Leeds United, um, it appears, will be kicking from left to right in the first half as they go into the pre-match huddle for the last few words of guidance, probably from skipper Liam Cooper. Fit again, back in the starting eleven. And it will indeed be QPR who are kicking towards the cop end in the first period of this game. Leeds United have suffered just one defeat here so far at Ellen Road this season at the hands of the current championship leaders as a result of the earlier game. Swansea City back on top of the table. And Leeds' aim this afternoon is to win this game and replace them in that position. That's the uh, mini prize on offer from this afternoon's fixture. QPR it is, will get the game underway. Referee takes a check on the watch. Whistle goes to the mouth, and we are up and running. And it's the uh, away side who have the early possession. Ball down the left-hand side, goes straight into touch, and that's going to be a throw-in, an early throw-in indeed for Leeds United. The first touch of the ball for Luke Ayling. Looking across a nominal back four of Ayling, White, Cooper, and Dallas. I was looking at Dallas' early position, straight away from the kickoff, he ran straight into the central midfield position. You can see him doing the job now. It's almost like we're playing without a left back, but um, but no, just for somebody to keep an eye on that going uh, for the next couple of minutes because see Harrison is in a deep position there, but no, Dallas is definitely in midfield, central midfield position out on the right now. Can I just make the point for the final time that these two kits are very, very similar? <laughs> they are very, very similar. At a glance, in particular. This is a bit daft. But anyway, there we go. QPR have a free kick on the near side, just in from the touchline. And it's uh, an opportunity for them to clear the ball away from dangerous territory, as far as they're concerned, in these very early stages of this game. Leeds United nil, Queen's Park Rangers nil. Match day live on LUTV brought to you by Deliveroo Food Freedom. Kelly, the QPR keeper, has come out to the penalty area to take the free kick for them. He's all in purple, so no problem distinguishing him from the Leeds United players. At the other end, Cassia, all in black today. As Dallas wins a header on the near side for Leeds, looking for Bamford against Leisner and then the ball is headed up in the air by Hall and drops for Ize on the halfway line and he's held up by Stuart Dallas and QPR do have a free kick 10-15 uh, yards outside the centre circle maybe and Ize who's got a good goal scoring and assist record so far this season just wriggled away from the challenger Stuart Dallas there and invited the foul yeah dangerous player for him Ize like you said there Bryn he's um, 
been involved in 10 goals, six goals, four assists for him so far this year. So Vital will keep an eye on him today. So the first um, defensive moment of any note in this game falls on Leeds United. They've got to try and clear their lines from this QPR free kick, which it looks like is going to be swung into somewhere around the edge of the penalty area. Left-footed ball comes in now. And the head's up on the far side of the box. It takes a touch off a Leeds head and it's gone behind for the first corner kick of the game. And it's the away side who've earned it. So QPR, as we suggested before kick-off, setting a stall out. Happy to have a go when the opportunity arises. Just they switch on because Manning just running over there in swing with his left foot, just took that free kick. His delivery is very good. Just scored quite a number of goals from set pieces, especially off Manning as well. Just had his first Republic of Ireland call up Ryan Manning to the senior side at least. And the corner kick comes in from him now. It is an in-swinger. Casilla comes and collects very comfortably indeed. And as he tries to throw the ball out over arm, it's nudged out of his grasp, I think, by Jordan Hugel. And as a result of that, Leeds have instead a free kick right almost on the penalty spot. It comes out to Ailing on the near side and Ailing sets off on a bit of a run forward over the top looking for Tyler Roberts referee looking for his first touch referee says Ben Parker because Tyler Roberts tumbled to the ground and there was a challenge on him but nothing was given Calvin Phillips back flick halfway line click brings Harrison into play far side now Phillips and then gives the ball back to Jack Harrison and Harrison's under pressure so it goes back to Liam Cooper and then the heads go up in the QPR half and Eze comes out with the ball and then it's knocked back to Hall the captain and then it goes down the line and Liam Cooper can jog back to pick up possession for Leeds. Naki Wells, the former Bradford and Huddersfield, in fact former Eccles Hall man wasn't he? Way back when he first arrived in England from Bermuda. Eccles Hill, Eccles Hill big difference <laughs> Eccles Hill United Yeah I wondered if going into this game whether they'd stick with Naki Wells or substituting with Hugo coming back into the fold after his suspension but they've been bold obviously set up here 4-4-2 with uh, probably now what Sheffield Wednesday did really well mm -hmm. to us especially in the second half by trying to press us from the front on the counter of that it looks like we've gone f kind of 5-3-2 or 3-5-2 whatever way you want to <laughs> look at it but um, maybe we're just trying to use that extra man wherever we can Increasingly, the championship is every week another fascinating tactical battle isn't it where everybody's trying to outthink each other uh, maybe that's the uh, Bielsa effect as Eze runs away from a challenge again and makes menacing moves forward into the penalty area. It goes for Queen's Park Rangers now and it's Wells who has possession on the far side of the penalty area being watched by White and then the cross comes all the way across the six-yard box. Leeds had bodies in there to ensure that the man on the far post for QPR Manning didn't get any sort of contact on the ball. But there was a glimmer of something for the away team there. Every time the ball fizzles across the face of goal like that, you always hold your breath. But I just think looking at the, the players' like body language, I think they was always in control. There wasn't too much danger. But um, you'd like to stop that cross, though. A bit too easy letting him get cut back onto his left fizz when the cross face of the goal. Ball is won back by QPR as Leeds try and clear on the halfway line. But now it is with Dallas. And Dallas is clearly nudged in the back by Manning right in front of the referee. Republic of Ireland player on the Northern Ireland player and Leeds United get a free kick which they want to take and do take quickly to Ailing on the near side now Costa just had his first touch in the game well Costa done. skips away well and gives the ball to Ailing and Ailing has it on the right hand side chance for him to cross into the box oh, oh and Click arrived and met it and he got too much on it and it flew over the crossbar from such an inviting position it was a great run the timing was excellent the finish not so great ball by Luke Ailing all started from a quick free kick. Ben White just gave it to Aileen. He just took the space, ran into it, and I could see out corner my eye click making that third man run from the midfield area. No one tracked him. You've got to say, Bryn has got to score in that position, or at the very least hit the target. Well, he's trying to win the ball back for Leeds United now. The roars of approval from the home supporters, but that'll be a free kick to Queen's Park Rangers. Just a bit too much from Calvin Phillips in that challenge there. So the away side have a chance to just relieve a little bit of that pressure that we'd seen in the last couple of minutes and get the ball up into the United half. Seven minutes almost on the clock. Noise levels rise inside Ellen Road as a result of that excellent opportunity that came the way of Matthias Click. Been much talk about the need for others to weigh in with goals and that was a chance, no doubt about that. 
Foster comes down this near side. Bamford plays the ball in field, but giving it straight to the German player, Leisner. Leisner goes down. That's another free kick, this time conceded by Tyler Roberts, Welsh international. And the ball is taken short, and Manning goes down the line, but aimlessly under pressure from Ailing. And it goes straight into touch for a throw in to Leeds United. I think that was good, though, from Click making that third man run. Yeah, he should have hit the target, arguably should have scored. But um, if he keeps making those runs throughout the game, doesn't help out the, um, the strikers, particularly Bamford. I think the last two kind of away games, we haven't um, got the body supporting him as much. as we just give a sloppy free kick away there. Oh, yeah, that was poor. Ailing took it quickly, but gave it straight. Maybe it's the shirt thing. I'm just putting it out there. Gave it straight to a QPR player. On the near side, the chance for Manning to cross the ball into the Leeds penalty area. But uh, Ailing steps across. Maybe rather atones that earlier poor pass. I'm just going to keep going on about this, but I'm really surprised they're allowed to set up with, with strips that are so, so close at a glance, at a glance. QPR throwing to Ize on the near side, almost level with the edge of the penalty area. Now the cross comes in from this near side and Casilla stoops and gathers it up fairly comfortably. Naki Wells tries to impede his run towards the edge of the penalty area. And Casilla throws it over arm to the far side and Liam Cooper who gets the ball back from Calvin Phillips and then in field it goes to Ben White and then out to this near side and Luke Ayling championship table tells the story of just how tight the league looks this season barely any points spread between top and mid table now Bamford on the edge of the area for Leeds now Stuart Dallas will try and curl one and the keeper Kelly pushes it away there wasn't much power in that from Stuart Dallas but he put a bit of backspin on it and it caused the keeper an anxious moment and he pushed it behind as a result yeah it was um, an interesting kind of parry he could have threw his cap on it. He didn't come with great, <laughs> great speed. But just wondering whether Dallas could have slipped Roberts there. He was making a late run to his left-hand side. Opted for the shot. Won a corner, though. Leeds first corner from the far side. Calvin Phillips will take it. Signal given from Phillips. Runs into the box. Cummins clean away from the edge of the six-yard box. Tyler Roberts is waiting outside the area for Leeds. Woe rides one challenge and then is brought unceremoniously to ground for a Leeds United free kick which they want to take quickly they're not able to do so because the referee I think is about to book a QPR play certainly he's called Manning out um, to have a word with him at the very least it may just be a first warning first and final warning perhaps well, I think it's the third time I've counted now where they've stopped a quick free kick so ultimately you get away with one but the third time you usually see a yellow card but done well did Roberts just to win that free kick his initial touch just skidded away from him due to probably the surface being wet. But um, twisted one player, chopped another. And like I said, did really well to win a free kick. And dangerous position. You just want to test the keeper out here. Conditions like this. That's what you say in the change rooms before you go out. Can we test the keeper out early doors? Get an effort on target. Yeah, it's uh, definitely in shooting distance for Calvin Phillips. Maybe the one thing Leeds have been lacking is a, a somebody who can put one straight in from a free kick. There's a great opportunity for Calvin Phillips to show what he can do from this one here. The QPR wall is pretty much on the edge of the penalty area. It gives you some indication of how far the ball is away from goal. It's almost central as well as Calvin Phillips steps up now, doesn't beat the wall, comes back to Phillips and he just swings a boot through it and it goes wide, wide, wide. And so that's a QPR goal kick and that is a, that's a disappointing free kick, isn't it? Yeah, one is best it's straight at the wall and then the rebound um, let's just say that about that the better Bryn. <laughs> it's um, yeah it's one of those areas where Leeds may be in good positions like that you need to have someone in there who can really exploit that opportunity that presents itself as the goal kick is not the best it's low and in towards the halfway line Costa goes into a challenge and uh, QPR players down I think it's Manning down and he looks like he's in some discomfort to say the least he's clutching at his uh, calf but then I think now that the free kick has been awarded suddenly feels just a little bit better and yeah there he's back up on his feet again and so there is a free kick he just shows his calf to Helder Costa as if to say you really hurt me then <laughs> and it will be a free kick which QPR take from the halfway line taken short to chair and then comes back on this near side. Bamford tries to commit the foul. Fails to do so against Wallace. Back in the starting 11 for QPR this afternoon. He's on the bench on Monday night. Former Rangers man. And another free kick to QPR on this near side. Leeds have 
committed quite a few fouls in the opening uh, 12 minutes of this game. Scoreless still, Leeds nil, QPR nil. Leeds feels... have had the best chance, the click opportunity. Sorry, but it just feels a bit niggly, don't it? Like, we're closing down really well. But sometimes you don't have to kind of make the challenge, just rush them into a, a, force, a force pass, win the ball back like that. They'll be happy with these little niggly free kicks. Manning goes fairly short down the line. That's going to be another free kick, though, as Dallas puts hands in the back of Eze, and Eze, as a result, almost inevitably drops to the floor. We've seen that so many times. Just the contact gives the attacking player the invitation to go to ground, and uh, Eze takes the invitation, and the referee reads that one as being a QPR free kick. So this is in a better, more advanced position for the away side. It's just in from the touchline. Leeds United having to defend the edge of the penalty area. The one-man wall held Acosta, still shaking his head ruefully, I think, about the earlier free kick award that led to this little passage of play and the chance for QPR to get a ball into or around that Leeds United penalty area. Manning, it is who takes it for them. Swings the ball in towards the edge of the box and then it's Hoogle with a header and that one goes away from goal, some way away from goal and it will be a Leeds United goal kick. Casilla goes, retrieves the ball. Leeds set up short, giving the, an option of a two or three yard pass to Ben White potentially on the edge of the six yard box and now we have our first um, officials interlude in terms of potentially is it what's going on in the technical areas usually it is at Leeds must be another kick clash because the QPR kind of strips they're all in white so <laughs> I think they're just adamant to trying to mix everybody up today yeah it's confusing it's a good job you're not watching in black and white that's for certain Tyler Roberts for Leeds United goes down that will be a free kick for Leeds so the game stop start stop start but Leeds have the award this time and they take it quickly Roberts to Ailing, but they take it too quickly and they they immediately told to take it again and they immediately take it quickly again. Ailing tries nutmegs on chair, fails to do that. And the Moroccan brings the ball away for QPR on the halfway line. White tussling with Hugel. Hugel gets wrestled out the way. The ball comes back to Kiko Casilla, but Hugel continues to doggedly put pressure on the Leeds keeper who bypasses him and gives the ball out to Ben White instead. And then White in field to Calvin Phillips, who's under pressure from chair, and then back to... Ben White again, and then down on this near side. Leeds have worked that away Kick from pressure Ailing. well there. Nice triangles. And then Ailing through the middle, rather into a no man's air, no man's land, but well, Phillips well. steps in and knocks the ball wide for Jack Harrison. Jack Harrison swings a deep, deep cross in towards Bamford at the far post, puts it in towards a near post, and there was nobody there in a lead shirt, and QPR did their level best to do Leeds work for them there with the man sliding on the near post was Ryan Manning. And just for a second there, there was a confused moment between the goalkeeper and the QPR player. Ultimately, between them, they sorted it out and the keeper is able to clear along as a result of that. It was almost like we kind of stopped when we saw the cross be relatively deep to the back stick, but Bamford's run initially well. His movement just peeled off at the back stick. Yeah, the cross was a bit lofted, but done well to keep it back in play. If someone was just kind of proactive on the move. It might have been a tapping, but... Um, Even to put pressure on the defender. Exactly, so the defender might have panicked, and he did panic with no-one around him by slipping over. Halfway line, QPR had possession very briefly, and then they've overhit the forward ball looking for Naki Wells. It's flown over the head of Wells and Cooper, and it's gone out for a goal kick. Quarter of an hour over that on the clock now. Leeds nil, Queen's Park Rangers nil. Rangers with a good away record almost as good Excellent. as Leeds away record but now Ben White sets off on a run forward good ball as well to Dallas right through the middle Stuart Dallas out to the near side of the penalty area held Costa held Costa holds the ball up held Costa back to Dallas but he's under pressure and as a result QPR get bodies around the ball and now they try and break away themselves the referee's played an advantage Hugel through the middle has peeled off White and he's brought the player chair onto the play on the far side and then there's a foul committed on Liam Cooper as the QPR player steps across him. But again, advantage is played by the referee. And again, Leeds give the ball away when they were set up to try and start something going forward then. And QPR it is, as a result, who pick the ball up and now have it in Leeds half. And the man in possession on the far side, Naki Wells. And Wells loses out. And now Dallas tries to slip a pass into Bamford, but Leisner read that one. It wasn't quite slick enough in terms of the delivery from Stuart Dallas good idea but not quite the delivery and uh, Leisner read it and got in now Phillips under a little well bit of pressure on the edge of the penalty area does well to stoop and nod the ball back to 
Kiko Casilla. And Casilla then will roll the ball out towards the near side touchline and Luke Ayling. And Ayling will... Well, he needs support, so he knocks the ball short to Click. And then Click can't get the ball back to Ayling. And it comes off Wells for a Leeds United throw-in. Down below us as we sit in our regular position on halfway uh, on the gantry underneath the roof of the West Stand. The roof that keeps us dry as the rain continues to fall heavily here at Ellen Road this afternoon. Harrison on the far side for Leeds goes down the line looking for the run of Dallas. Just bounces beyond Dallas. Leisner waits behind and gives it back to Kelly the keeper. And he delivers it long, long up into the Leeds half over the head of everybody in the pastel blue away strip settle for that and Luke Ayling picks up for Leeds on the halfway line plays oh, a ball oh. from right to left to Tyler Roberts on the edge of the centre circle Tyler Roberts going forward plays it into the path of Bamford almost maybe you'd say just slightly out to the path ultimately of Patrick Bamford allowing the defensive intervention and now the ball's up on the halfway line with Phillips and Chair battling for it QPR have the ball back again player slips to the ground nothing given so Chair is forced back towards his own goal Hall even further back towards his own goal as Bamford works hard for Leeds keeper hesitates and then Costa comes to join in and put pressure on the defender in possession Manning has it and QPR are playing backwards at the moment Wallace is under pressure as is Manning and then the ref's assistant near side flags for a free kick but again the referee plays advantage and again the team given the advantage because there's an opportunity for them build some, to build something wasted by putting that one straight into touch yeah both teams are really guilty at the moment just giving sloppy passes away I think Dallas went through a period where he gave two three away when initially the first one when Ben White broke through the, um, the middle of the pitch striding out with the ball the ball fell to Dallas end product wasn't great and again another misplaced pass so unlike us at the moment yeah, it's not the uh, not the leads we've got used to seeing in these opening 20 minutes. The passing has uh, too often gone awry. Lots of free kicks being given away. And the game is pretty even at the moment, although Leeds have created by some distance the best opportunity. The ball from the right side into the oncoming Matthias Click from around about the penalty spot. It arrived at his feet in the air. He was off the ground when he volleyed the ball goalwards, but he couldn't keep the ball down, and it went up and over the crossbar. That was definitely the best opening we've had, though, so far. Harrison, in a defensive position, gives the ball back to Cooper. Over the top, now there's a chance maybe for Bamford to put some pressure on the QPR defender Leisner here. Leisner holds the ball up, look towards his own penalty area. Just threw Bamford off the scent there for a moment, and then QPR bring the ball up to Manning on the halfway line. Under pressure from Costa, and he knocks it into touch on the near side, but the referee's given a... A free kick here. So the referee, in a sense, he's trying to play advantages, but equally he's given frustrating free kicks like that as well. No, I think it's just settled for a throw-in. But uh, no, you're right. But it was better, it was better from Costa because the pressure were there, and he didn't have to dive in and make a silly little rush challenge. But um, I was saying when we're doing that pressing, don't give away free kicks. Let them force into mistakes because they're trying to play out from the back play through midfield. Well, uh, that's Hugo getting penalised there we talk about whenever a player feels contact the attacking player they're liable to drop to the ground which is exactly what Hugel did there but fair play to the ref he gave Leeds the free kick because Hugel didn't make a tremendously convincing job of that one did he he needs to watch Luke Hale and he's the master of that dark art it's all about the timing I suspect and Hugel's was just a little bit delayed there so Leeds end up getting the free kick which they take long and Bamford oh he'd almost got in behind the last defender there but that last defender made an important intervention with a header. Oh, Eze's pullback. That could easily be a booking. That will be a booking for Click. And he can have no complaints because Eze had spun away from the Leeds midfielder. And he grabbed him almost round the neck there to, just to pull him back. So first yellow card of the game. And it goes to Click. He looks really clever player, Eze. He's one of those guys who can just drift past players. But by the looks of him, he looks like a big lad as well, so he can shrug players off. I just think there when... We are trying to press. Just notice who you're up against. If you're trying to rush in against a player like Eze, where you can see you're coming out of the corner of his eye, he'll just knock it past you, then you're out of the game. You have to do what Click did there and pull him back and take a yellow card. Yeah, there's um, some good invention being shown by Eze in the, so that sort of roaming role for QPR so far. Leeds are more than aware of it. Click has been yellow carded for it as the ball comes into the penalty area from the halfway line and it takes the final touch, I think, of Jordan Hugel. Um, who's under pressure from Liam Cooper and goes behind what we can say with certainty is that it's a Leeds goal kick 
as the ball was swung into the penalty area the two players well, the final touch actually came off Naki Wells I think but it just was a, a glance off the shirt no more than that not that it matters Kiko Casilla ready to get the ball up towards the halfway line by the look of it yeah he's gone long and it's over the head of Bamford Costa was waiting behind but so was Lee Wallace it goes all the way back to Kelly and Tyler Roberts will put the keeper under pressure and he's hurried in his clearance it goes straight to Ailing on the halfway line Ailing's pushed to the ground by Eze there's a perfect example Ben <laughs> and that's how you do it Hugo <laughs> yeah he felt the touch he fell down and Leeds get a free kick it's just in from the near side touch line and it's maybe 15 yards inside the QPR half and on this near side Calvin Phillips as you would expect has come across to take it for Leeds Phillips spots it up all the players lining up on the far side of the penalty area Harrison there Costa there Ben White there Ailing there Bamford there Cooper there and Roberts just outside the penalty area and it comes in from Phillips now swings the ball into a good position and ahead of goal it's from Luke Ailing. well he got above everybody else in the box there but he couldn't quite get the header down so it goes just a yard or two over the crossbar but it was a really good run from Luke Ailing, threatening and something almost came of that you have to say from where the ball was what a fantastic delivery by Calvin Phillips and Luke Ailing, we haven't seen it too much this season players going attacking the ball someone looking not to get on target He's in possession, but he's under pressure from Stuart Dallas, who's done well to force him all the way back to the goalkeeper, Kelly. And Kelly sliced his clearance. Roberts is waiting underneath him, wins the header, but it goes straight to Eze. But Bamford's in on the back of Eze. Eze skips away from that challenge and another challenge, and he goes down again, and he's fouled this time. Oh, it's again, it's click. He's going to have to be careful now, isn't he? Because if he's going to be in that battle zone involving Eze, in the proximity of Eze, the player's shown himself adept at wriggling away from challenges. He's going to have to time them really well now because he's on that yellow card. There's my point where seeing who you're going to close down, just in case if it is, he's a, a tricky player who can move, change direction really quick. In the day like today where the pitch is wet as well, Bryn, so you've just got to be careful. Maybe just put the brakes on a tad early. Keeper Kelly under pressure from Bamford. Goes short to Wallace. Two former Rangers men. Back to Kelly it goes again and Bamford is sniffing around in there, putting pressure on not letting anybody settle in possession that's the, the unseen work if you like from Patrick Bamford that goes on whenever he's on the pitch but QPR have worked the ball forward towards the right hand side midway inside the Leeds half Wells is under pressure from Cooper Wells on the far touch line gives the ball back into a midfield area but Harrison picks it up for Leeds and skips away and over a challenge gives the ball to Click now Leeds have players bombing on here great ball for Bamford Bamford on the edge of the area goes past the keeper and then the challenge is made on Bamford on the edge of the box by Wallace that stops the opportunity for the shot on goal and Kelly the keeper comes to gather it that was another really good opening for Leeds United QPR come up the other end immediately Wells into the penalty area poor ball straight into the hands of Kiko Garcia great pass by Clicklow defence splitting and Patrick Bamford there He's probably been crying out for that chance last couple of weeks. 1v1 with the keeper. He just thought there was a bit of space down the side of him. Instead of trying to take it early, try and get the shot away. Maybe I think hindsight, get the shot away early. Don't give the defender a chance to get back and make that tackle. So Costa is pushed to the ground. That has to be a free kick. Well, I think an advantage is played again as Costa has the ball on the edge of the penalty area. Comes out. Now it's Tyler Roberts. Tyler Roberts into the penalty area. Trying to work the space for the shot. And the second challenge from Hall blocks the space for the shot. And then Eze brings the ball away for QPR. Beats Cooper, plays the ball forward for Hugel. Leeds have got to get back and defend now. Hugel up on the edge of the penalty area. Plays the ball into the penalty box. And again, another poor one is easy for Kiko Garcia. No, Leeds will waste no time in coming back, trying to regain the momentum. Game suddenly sparks into life. And Leeds have it with Dallas on the near side. 26 minutes gone. Leeds nil, QPR nil little flick from Costa comes off the marking figure of Manning and Leeds have a throw in down below us on this near side you have to give credit to QPR the way they're set up it's made for a game that's really open bit end to end at the moment I just think we can get a shot away early Roberts with a guilty guy there test the keeper out on a day like today Roberts is in possession for Leeds now but he gives the ball under pressure back to Luke Ayling on the halfway line Ayling back into the Leeds half and Ben White now he switches play will he find oh he will find Harrison but Harrison oh, maybe he took his eye off it there and he couldn't control properly 
just when there was a chance maybe to get on the run on that far side and QPR have the ball and then lose the ball quickly. Good challenge coming in from Liam Cooper. Ball played over the top and it's sliced by Jack Harrison then. It's gone straight into touch on the far side. Just when Leeds looked like they could um, build an attack. In fact, I uh, have to give credit. We've just seen a replay of the Bamford opportunity there. Kelly, the keeper, did really, really well to slide out and just whip the ball off the feet. Wallace and Kelly between them. Wallace to close down the space for the initial shot, perhaps, and then Kelly to read it well and just grab onto the ball and make sure that Patrick Bamford wasn't able to just zip past him and he'd have had an empty net had he been able to do that. So two good openings created by Leeds United, but the scoreline remains nil-nil. And we've had 28 minutes. Eze coming forward for QPR now. Plays the ball up to Wells on the edge of the penalty area. Wells has Manning potentially in support. Chips the ball up himself, slices the cross, goes behind, and that will be a Leeds goal kick. As this half's developing, Eze's grown into the game more and more for QPR. We just need to be careful. Again, trying to, Dallas this time just trying to nip the ball off him. I think just stand off him. And this might be a good sign, actually. He's just, just dropped to the ground down, so. and uh, looks in some discomfort there. And it, there's the physio is being called on. From a totally from a Leeds perspective, it wouldn't be the worst news in the world if he was struggling with a little injury here. Maybe I don't know, a hamstring or calf strain, perhaps. Maybe. It's funny enough because moments before he's just gone down, he sprinted away, played a little pass into Naki Wells. So we suggest it's more of a muscle kind of injury. You just won't go down. You can see he's got the um, the blue tape, the K tape, they call it on back. I don't know if it's on back of his knees, hamstring going down to his calf. So it's obviously had an issue with that going into the game by the looks of things. But um, most of our boys have come over to this near touchline. A few getting messages. I think Stuart Dallas is in conversation with um, the manager Marcelo Bielsa. It'll be interesting. I'd love to be inside um, the manager's head right now. Just. What, what he's wondering, what he's thinking about this this opening 29 minutes because we get to some decent positions. We're playing well in patches, but then the frustration's kicking in by giving a sloppy pass away or probably not taking the chance, hitting the target. So it's um it's kind of got everything. The performance, the, the, the ups and downs of the song kind of go so far. But um, I definitely think the spaces are there. If we can just have that killer, killer instinct, and that's just not in terms of the finish, that's in terms of finding a pass at the right time, a tempo of a pass, or we've seen Ben White drive forward with the ball. Just these little things, because like how QPR is set up, the spaces are there to kind of exploit that. Well, Ize has come to the near side touchline. He's um, sucking hard on the, the uh, what they call Ventolin inhaler, is it called? The inhalers, yeah. Um, so whether that was an aspect of him going down there or not, um, I don't know. But he's uh, he's coming back onto the field of play. Seems to be moving OK now. Maybe that was the, the situation. Maybe that was the issue. As the ball's gone out to the far side touchline, Leeds United will have a throw in. Um, and if you have a quick look, cast a glance at Ize now, he seems to be moving OK at least. As they were out there manipulating his left leg. And yeah, he's run across, sprinted across to try and pick up Dallas. He's played a good ball over the top for Bamford. Bamford can't bring Click into play, though. The ball is played into an area that Click had just left. So it will be a throw into QPR, level with the edge of their own penalty area. Half an hour gone here in another tight, close encounter sort of game we've become used to seeing. Maybe the difference here is that Leeds aren't quite dominating possession as we have got used to seeing in these home games. So there have been fewer corner kicks by far, fewer set pieces by some distance, but still a couple of chances created that Leeds haven't been able to take. And then Ailing lets the ball roll out. Well, he didn't actually let the ball roll out, but he's lucky because the ref's assistant near side deemed that it had gone out as he hit it, and Leeds still get the throw in anyway. Roberts from Dallas, right foot Stuart Dallas. Fans doing their bit as Click gives the ball to Roberts over the top for Bamford, and Bamford is just offside, I think he was offside we can see, have a good line of vision on that one, just maybe set off a little too early so QPR have the free kick just outside their own penalty area noise levels going up from the fans in the south stand towards which Leeds are kicking in this first period as the goalkeeper Kelly comes to the edge of the box and out of the box to take the free kick down the channel, long down the channel. Ben White wins the header, drops Rize, hits him on the shoulder. So 
Uh, in fact, it doesn't hit him on the shoulder. It hits him on the upper arm. So it's a free kick to Leeds United for handball. And Ben White takes a short one to Luke Ayling. And then Ayling up towards the centre circle and Calvin Phillips. Phillips wide to Harrison. Harrison, right, Excellent. sets off on a bit of a run. Brings the ball away from the marking player. Now brings Roberts into the action. Roberts going towards the penalty area for Leeds. Leeds midway inside now, the QPR half. Click switches play to this near side. Good ball to Dallas. Dallas with the first time cross into the penalty area. Wallace was waiting on the edge of the six-yard box and it's Wallace who gets the header into touch on this near side for a Leeds United throw-in. Now maybe the pressure is beginning to build a little. Great flick by Roberts to Costa. Costa curls a shot in goalwards. And I think Leisner was the man who was waiting there who just flicked the ball up with his head and diverted it away from goal and it goes out by the far corner flag for Leeds United throw in. That's what I mean by injecting the tempo whether it's a pass that we saw out to Dallas or when Jack Harrison just cut back inside on his left foot um, Roberts did the kind of same chopping back inside just do things that are tempo. Roberts and uh, Harrison linking up well far side great ball from Roberts into Harrison Harrison in the penalty area low cross oh right across the goal line and then it's turned away at the far post turned behind at the far post and QPR so, so relieved that nobody was there for Leeds to touch that ball into the back of what would have been an unguarded net. Corner kick Leeds. Excellent play from Tyler Roberts and Harrison just to create that space down on the left-hand side. Whether he should just put his laces through it himself, who knows, but good defender just to usher Bamford out of the way. Phillips with the ball into the six-yard area. It's headed clear. Comes out towards Costa on the edge of the box, but he slipped on the wet surface. And the ball is picked up by Chair, so Costa tries to get the ball back off him. Chair runs the ball into touch, far side. And Leeds United will have a throw-in, and Costa earns himself a round of applause from the home supporters for his, his efforts in winning that ball back for Leeds in the shape of a throw-in. Ball comes back to Liam Cooper. Cooper hooks the ball back towards Ben White, and then White comes out to the right side. Now Ayling's got space to work in down the right-hand side. Gives the ball to Dallas, back to Ailing again. Ailing right foot, ball into, nice. good ball into Click, and Click's got a lot of time now. And Harrison's out wide of him in a promising position. Click brings the ball inside instead. Now tries a low drive, and it takes a deflection on the edge of the penalty area. And quite a hefty deflection because it comes out over the near side touchline for a Leeds United throw in. Things are looking better all of a sudden for Leeds. Ten minutes before half time. Near side, Click with a cross into the penalty area. Great ball over the head of Patrick Bamford, and it's cleared away. Out to Ailing, Leeds come again, near side. Costa with the ball now. Costa wriggles away from the challenger Wells, brings it out to Dallas on the right-hand side. Dallas curls another inviting ball in. Bamford with the head, Harrison was stooping at the far post, but it was just a little too far ahead of Jack Harrison, and it goes behind for a goal kick. Much better from Leeds. Just stopped it a little bit, haven't we, now, last five minutes. The tempo's there. We um, Just getting the chances out wide. The movement out wide is fantastic. But going back to the, the um, pass from Ailing into Click, I think that ball's on because QPR are drifting all so tight over, trying to compact the play in one particular corner. If we can get that switch, a little reverse pass, we've always got that spare man on the outside shoulder, so can we do that bit of creativity from like Ailing showed, just don't break them a little bit more. Hoogle and White with a good a little challenge on this near side. The ball comes off Hoogle. He's less than happy with the ref's decision not to give him a free kick. And it's a Leeds throw-in. And Ailing has the ball from that throw-in, taken by White. As we head ever closer to half-time, match day live on LUTV, brought to you by Deliveroo Food Freedom. Kiko Casilla out towards the near side touchline. Ailing's got to be careful. Hugo was watching, and he heads the ball, loops the header back into the path of Ben White on the edge of the Leeds box. He's under pressure from Wells now, so it goes back to Kiko Casilla again. Out towards the edge of the area, Liam Cooper. Liam Cooper square to Ben White, and then a bit more space opens up in front of Ben White. Calvin Phillips on the edge of the centre circle out towards this near side and Luke Ayling runners set nice. off now Costa through the middle from the pass from Ayling Costa goes wide to Stuart Dallas who can carry the ball forward deep into lead into QPR territory Costa steps over it but it was the wrong decision because Hall was waiting behind him and very gratefully accepted the gift that was given him to pick up an easy possession for the away side and Leeds have to start again from the halfway line Click with the ball at his feet. Infield to Costa. Costa has to control. Leicester's come a long way out to pick him up, right up to the halfway line. Does that leave a gap that Leeds can exploit? Harrison now plays an intelligent square ball for Luke Ayling. Tyler Roberts on the edge of the area, but he comes out to the near side and Stuart Dallas. Dallas cuts inside, and now Roberts gives him a little touch back, and it almost breaks for Stuart Dallas, and then it'll roll out. It'll roll out 
very, very slowly towards this near side corner flag. We waited to see whether it go one side or the other of the corner flag. It goes the near side, which means it's a Leeds United throw in. Much better from Leeds in the last five minutes or so of this game. Eight minutes to go before the break. Costa, oh, it's again, it's a misplaced pass. It was Dallas who'd been in the position, left the position. Costa played it there anyway, and it went past Dallas and into touch. So QPR really given the opportunity too easily there, the chance to get the ball clear after they've been penned in around the penalty area, certainly in their own half for the last few minutes. The ball is thrown down the line towards the header, Hugo. Hugo gets a back flick on it, ailing against Wells. Wells actually wins the header. And then Chair in a cluster, a tight cluster of players, does really well to spin out of that group and get the ball forward towards the halfway line. And the man on the far side trying to pick up is uh, Angel Rangel. And then the ball comes up and over the halfway line. Well done. And Leeds win it back in their own half through Liam Cooper. Now Ben White and now Stuart Dallas on this right-hand side. There's the flexibility. There's the fluidity. They'll pull on the shirt of Costa. Costa does well, though, to knock the ball wide, to click and click to the on-rushing Jack Harrison. Far side of the penalty area for Leeds. Harrison taking on the defender. Step over. Has the ball inside now. Still with the ball at his feet to Tyler Roberts. Chance to shoot. No time! Tyler Roberts! Come on! Marks his first league start of the season with a cracking finish. Low to the keeper's side. And Tyler Roberts goes to celebrate with elite supporters. Leeds United 1, Queen's Park Rangers 0. He could sense it. It's been coming the last five minutes or so. Turning the screw, keeping the pressure high, keeping the turnovers high. And Jack Harrison's done ever so well there. He seemed like he might have known where to go. Just laid it back to Roberts. Intelligent finish is that. He's not trying to hit it too hard. He's just trying to place it, get it on target, through the crowd of the bodies, hit the target, 1-0. And that's kind of the dominant last five minutes, what we deserved. Tyler Roberts took that shot almost like a penalty kick. It was side-footed right into the side netting. Really good finish. No real power behind it, but absolute precision. And gave keeper Kelly no chance. And Leeds United have just what they wanted. A goal not too far away from the half-time break. 39 minutes on the clock. Leeds United 1, QPR 0. And Tyler Roberts will be absolutely delighted to be back amongst the goals for Leeds. It's been a tricky old start to the season. But he's got the opportunity today and he'll look to do as much as he can to keep his place in the starting 11. He's started off pretty well on that basis. As the... Uh, oh, there's a hand... Oh, no, no handball given. Oh, there's confusion there because the ref didn't give a free kick. QPR played an advantage. Then the player fell over and they actually handled the ball as if it were a free kick, and then the ref felt duty-bound to give a free kick anyway. It was almost like, referee, you just wait there, I'll make the decision for you. I'm having a free kick. And they got one, instead of Leeds getting a free kick for handball. Anyway, Leeds have conceded a throw-in on the far side, midway inside their own half. Big five minutes for Leeds United, maybe now, going in towards the interval. Tyler Roberts will be delighted to have his name being sung by the Leeds fans again, as the ball goes all the way back to Kelly on the edge of the QPR box. He zips a long ball forward. Good header from Ailing, And it's picked up by Costa, who can stride forward for Leeds. Over the halfway line he goes. And then he's given the ball away. I know what I'm going to say there. He's given it straight to a QPR player when he thought there was a Leeds player in the same position. I'm saying Kit. That's what I'm saying. Could be a shout, Bryn. One of those instinctive passes when you just glance up. And it was given straight to... It was, it was, it was a, a decision almost that he took to give it to a QPR player. Leeds come on the halfway line. Click has possession. Plays the ball down the channel for Roberts to chase. Well, he's game, but he's never going to get there. Kelly comes out with his penalty. But Leeds get a throw in, so it's a, not a bad return on a fairly hopeful ball forward on that occasion. And it's Tyler Roberts' willingness to work that brings Leeds United a throw in level with the edge of the QPR box. Could they improve on that first goal and get something else before half-time? Well, they've given possession away there through Jack Harrison. And they come again from just inside the QPR half with Calvin Phillips in possession. Phillips switches the play to near side and Costa. Costa goes back to the halfway line and Stewart Dallas. And Dallas to White and White has the chance to go all the way back to Kiko Casilla, which he takes. And Kiko Casilla in no massive hurry at this stage to play the ball up towards the halfway line. Heads go up there. Manning beats Ailing. Phillips underneath it controls really well. Ball dropping out the 
wet sky over Excellent. the top this is a good looking ball from Phillips and Costa's on the run down the right hand side Bamford's peeled off in the middle and Costa can't get the ball beyond the first defender Wallace but it comes off Wallace and goes behind for a corner kick Patrick Bamford waits hands on hips a little at the far post there in all sorts of space you can see on the replay screens there where Costa just kind of put his hand up because you could see him he just couldn't get the ball to drop just in time the defender got back but excellent play from Calvin, Calvin Phillips knew the space was in behind great little pass and that's what Costa's all about using his speed getting behind defenders when that high line is there so Calvin Phillips it is who started the move who comes forward to take the corner kick for Leeds United now last couple of minutes plus a little bit of added time I think at the end of this first half maybe a minute no more than two I wouldn't think we've had one stoppage in play as Phillips takes the corner kick for Leeds out a good looking ball and Cooper arrived late again and it came off the top of the head of Liam Cooper who gives thumbs up for Phillips for the delivery and he shakes his head as he runs back towards the halfway line because that goes down as a chance maybe yeah great delivery yet again from Calvin and again another example of someone really attacking it this time Liam Cooper unfortunately it just went wide of the post Leeds trying to put pressure on every QPR player in possession particularly around the edge of the penalty area the away side have worked the ball forward though and they have the chance to attack maybe now as Rangel gives the ball away now Leeds can come themselves potentially Phillips under pressure and he's given the ball away almost understandable because he had two QPR players right on him right away there and Chair it is who gives the ball out to Rangel far side for the away team then the captain Hall then back to the former Swansea man Angel Rangel and Rangel in field to Ize Ize turns away really well from Stuart Dallas still with the ball at his feet moves up towards the edge of the Leeds penalty area through the middle tries to play the ball through Dallas there comes back out towards Rangel on the edge of the area and then breaks for Naki Wells in some space on the edge of the box and he slips a ball in towards the far post and surely the last QPR man Hugo was offside there nothing given by the assistant on the far side and the referee says nothing doing either Leeds are happy enough well, he was miles off yeah we've got a couple of yards off um, the ball went behind for a goal kick anyway so perhaps the referee opted to allow play to resume with something very similar given the uh, position of the player on the edge of the six yard box a goal kick and Leeds are 30 seconds 40 seconds away from the final minute of this first half before we see the board go up at least and Ben White plays the ball out towards Luke Ayling on this near side and Ayling right football straight onto the head of Eze but he can't keep the ball in play Leeds will be happy enough to see it come off his forehead and into touch Mark Warburton the QPR manager has knocked the ball to Luke Ayling so that he can uh, restart the game with a throw in just checks on the position board appears down below us ready to indicate the added time as the um, final seconds of the normal time tick through Ayling in field to Liam Cooper two added minutes Tyler Roberts the goal scorer on the halfway line pulled to the ground Leeds will be happy enough to have a free kick they take it quickly Ailing on this right hand side they've shown an ability to create moments in these closing seconds of halves Leeds remember Bamford's header at Hillsborough last weekend so close as close as Leeds got indeed to a goal in that game Ben White though is happy to play in his own half at this advanced stage of the first half of proceedings now Ailing does turn forward and gives it to Costa and Costa out towards Bamford near side and then back to Costa again and Costa tries a little back heel into the path of Bamford and it spins away on this near side and it's going to be a Leeds United throw in down by the corner flag so Leeds can attack into the final minute of this added time first 60 seconds have all but elapsed 60 seconds or so remaining Dallas comes across to take the throw in for Leeds back to Dallas from click and into the box it was a good ball as well from Dallas it beat Bamford though comes out to Harrison on the edge of the area who controls and in doing so takes it a bit further away from the area now Ailing chips up miss hit the pass Costa's onside Bamford wasn't but Bamford wasn't interfering and now keeper Kelly's under pressure and there you go there is the moment that needs almost create something just by putting pressure on QPR even in these closing seconds of this first half it's a good trade from our team because well, you mentioned there bring the chance what we created in stoppage time last week we always go to the final second in each of the halves and you might create something out of nothing and just some sheer hard work, determination, won a corner kick and who knows, get a goal off back of this and you get something out of nothing going at 2-0 up. It's a massive pat on the back 
So Calvin Phillips has 15 seconds to take it. In it goes to the penalty area now. Heads up in there again. Leisner gets a touch away for QPR. Comes out for click on the edge of the area. Might as well have a go, maybe. Plays it out to this near side. And Calvin Phillips. Calvin Phillips with a chance to cross for Leeds. Curls across in. Bamford with a header! Straight into the hands of Kelly at the near post. It was a brilliant ball in from Calvin Phillips. And Patrick Bamford didn't have to jump to meet it. Feet planted when he headed it goalwards, but he couldn't get it beyond the goalkeeper. That's the last action. Exciting last moments of the first half. And Leeds United will be more than happy as they depart the pitch at Ellen Road with a one-goal advantage. Tyler Roberts having got the goal for them. back to Kelly, the QPR keeper. Apologies as you've lost us briefly there, but we're back and you've missed very, very little. QPR turns a corner kick. QPR did nothing with the corner kick and it's Kelly, the QPR keeper, currently clearing the ball away from his penalty area up to the centre circle where Ailing picks it up for Leeds and he carries the ball forward for Leeds. And there's a run. This Roberts is on down the channel, far side. Low ball, oh. down for oh. He's inches away from making a vital connection there, Patrick Bamford. Great play from Leeds. Tyler Roberts made a really good run down the channel right side and he played the ball across the six-yard box and Bamford saw it and slid in and didn't quite get there in time. You're right, fantastic play by Leeds, though, Bryn. Luke Halen, I think he's been absolutely superb. First half, his quality on the ball to find that spare man was superb. That time driving forward 
just had too much on the cross from Roberts. Well, Leisner is carrying the ball emphatically forward by QPR and then feels he's bustled off the ball and the referee... What's the referee given here? I'm not entirely sure. He's given a free kick, I think, to QPR, but I've absolutely no idea for what because it wasn't a foul on Leisner who had possession because he was never in the position from which the free kick was taken. So somebody else must have committed a, an off-the-ball offence. QPR go all the way back to the keeper. Kelly on the edge of his penalty area. QPR then play a short ball forward. Leisner's under pressure from Click, so it goes wide to the far side and Wallace, and Wallace forced back to his own goalkeeper, and Leisner will come under pressure from Click again, possibly here. Leisner scuffs the ball forward, but he finds Naki Wells on the halfway line. Wells under pressure, says he was fouled by Ailing. Referee sees nothing untoward about that. And QPR now in the centre circle with Jordan Hoogill. Oh, he's misplaced that horribly, Jordan Hoogill. Got the pass all wrong, but fair play to Hall. He recovered it and kept the ball in play, and QPR worked the ball out from the edge of their own penalty area. Again, Click puts the pressure on the man in possession, and the keeper's almost mishit his ball out of the penalty area. And Leisner, Leisner Referee. surely pulls Calvin Phillips out of the way there because Phillips have gone in front of Leisner, and it's the free kick to Leeds United that results from that unfair challenge. Great pressing, though, from us. And Calvin just read in where he was trying to go. Got his body, you're not shrugging Calvin off. Costa goes down the right side. Will he keep the ball in now? I didn't think he was going to. He's just slightly overhit that one. Costa saw space to run into. The ball was played into that space, but just overhit. And so it goes behind for a, a goal kick. But there is space to exploit here for Leeds United. And the home fans respond with a chorus of we are Leeds, we are Leeds, we are Leeds. From behind the goal, guarded by... Liam Kelly, the QPR keeper, who's delaying over getting the ball back into play from the edge of the six-yard box. Now it's taken short to Leisner, gives the ball out to this near side and the captain Hall up to the halfway line, over the halfway line. Rangel with a header. Ben White just rolls the ball away from the oncoming QPR player and then Leeds get it back to Kiko Casilla and then Cooper asks for help forward. It goes over the head of Tyler Roberts, comes back for Eze. Ize sets off on a forward run, plays the ball into a bit of space now for Chair. Chair is being watched by Calvin Phillips, still has the ball, Chair. Calvin Phillips gets a foot in, does oh really, God. really well there. Click can no. set Bamford off, but Bamford's gone too soon, and he'll be offside if he goes to touch the ball. And he only had to delay the run there, Patrick Bamford, because he was on the shoulder of the last defender, and any ball over the top was one that he could run onto, and he just stepped forward and the flag went up as a result. He was fighting to stay on side for so long. Whether he could release the pass a touch earlier, click. It's always a difficult one. As a striker, you're always just trying to get in behind. Only way to stay on side there was to be actually stand still, but then you're going to lose the momentum. But um, no, the, the spaces are still there, Bryn. You've just got to stay disciplined at the back. Don't give anything away cheaply. And off the top of my head, we haven't, um, we haven't given it away many chances at all even if it even if it's just the one but um we're gonna sleep, still working hard going back to the game um, cross from from tyler roberts across face of the goal you can imagine being in patrick bamford's boots there his eyes must have been lighting up thinking here we go this is what i've been waiting for a simple tapping the ball just got away from unfortunately but um keep probing with that keep probing with costa trying to get in behind because the space is there to utilize you're missing nothing at the moment because Leisner has been down receiving treatment whilst Ben has been talking and Leisner not entirely sure he's going to be able to co continue QPR set to make a change for sure uh, whether Leisner is the man to come off will be confirmed in just a moment when the board goes up from the fourth official but the first change of the game will be made by the away side for sure and Leisner doesn't look in the best state of uh, things at the moment a bit of a limp as he walks towards the yeah the he's coming off isn't he Leisner and he'll be replaced by the man wearing the number two shirt Kane the um, right back he's a former Chelsea man and Kane is going to play right back and so he looks like Angel Rangel is going to be the second central defender in there so a bit of a switch around for QPR and again I'm sure Angel Rangel hugely experienced player won't see playing at centre half as too much of a challenge but maybe there's an opportunity again that Leeds can do something about Harrison with a clearance block clearance from the edge of his own penalty area click comes in now Harrison comes as it 
comes onto the head of Kane for his first touch of the sub. Now Eze. Eze just outside the Leeds penalty area. Kane's tried to make space for Eze, who's done well with the nutmegs pass click. And then the ball is rolled up to the penalty spot. And the only man waiting there, luckily, is Calvin Phillips, because that was good, good approach play by Eze. Almost inviting a challenge in the penalty area there. Leeds managed to clear their lines. We mentioned we're clicking the first half. It's on the tightrope now with that yellow card. And that were evident there. You could tell he didn't really want to dangle the leg, try and win the ball. And Eze took the space. Ball on the near side with Harrison under pressure from Kane. QPR maybe just trying to up the tempo a little bit at the start of this second half. 55 minutes gone. Leeds United 1, QPR 0. Tyler Roberts' goal in the first half is what separates the two teams at the moment. Match day live on LUTV brought to you by Deliveroo Food Freedom. Patrick Bamford loses out in the halfway line to Hall. It comes for Phillips. And then feet going in, it's messy stuff at the moment. And Luke Ayling's going to have to charge out towards the right-hand touch line to try and keep the ball in play. Doesn't manage to do that, but will he get the throw in order? No, he doesn't. I suspected that was going to be the case. It goes the way of QPR, despite Luke Ayling's unhappiness. I thought the final touch was probably off a Leeds player there. So QPR have a throw in, level with the edge of the Leeds penalty area. Leeds need to be focused here and defend successfully. Movement in front of the throwing taker is from Naki Wells. Wells knocks it back into the path of the man wearing the number 12 shirt for QPR. Ball, and then the cross into the near post is very easy. It skips all the way through to Kiko Casilla, and Casilla just gives a calming motion to the Leeds players. Just, just take your time a little here. No need to rush stuff at this stage. Well, a long way to go in this game still, as we've learned from previous home games involving Leeds United and one goal leads. Cooper back towards the edge of the penalty area and Ben White, Ben White wide to Luke Ayling. Luke Ayling with the ball over the top. Dallas is chasing it but Hall is there all the way and Hall it is who just guides the ball back off the forehead into the hands of Liam Kelly and he throws out towards the left-hand touchline and Lee Wallace, and Wallace in field to Hugill who chest the ball off for Wells, beaten to it in the challenge by Cooper. The QPR have the ball back through Rangel in their own half. Rangel out towards the near side and Kane. Kane the right back down the line. It's going to bounce out of play though in the Leeds half. And Leeds have a chance to try and just get a little bit of control of possession again here. Something that QPR have um, seized in the last couple of minutes maybe. With that control with, I think with Kane coming on, it's almost the kind of match that's up. We're having that back five. See the three centre halves there. Rangel just been the right hand side of the three. The Harrison's run ever so well there. And Excellent. He's fouled on a forward run inside his own half. It's taken really quickly. Will this work or well, not quite? I mean, it was the right idea, I guess, from Dallas to ping one in as soon as the free kick was awarded. Ball had barely stopped rolling. Referee allowed it, and it was aimed in the direction of a forward run from Patrick Bamford. But Bamford didn't get. Well, it wasn't to him. It was just behind him. And it was the defender, Hall, who just nodded the ball back to the goalkeeper, Kelly. But pressure on the right-hand side from Helder Costa, who um, showed good signs in the Sheffield Wednesday game, I thought, at Hillsborough. And he's built on that performance in this one. Just getting a run of games now, run of starts in the team. Maybe a very different system to that which he's been used to previously, and maybe it takes time to adapt. And maybe we're seeing signs that that's happening as Costa does well to get a foot in and almost wins possession back for Leeds, although Bamford is a judge to have fouled the marking defender. And then Bamford is involved in a little bit of a pushing match before the um, ball is retrieved over on the far side touchline. Still the arguments continue. Costa's involved as well now. Free kick to QPR will be the, the end result of all of this. And the man who is um, struggling a little bit after that Patrick Bamford challenge is Lee Wallace. He's a big lad, he should be all right. I'm not sure what Patrick Bamford's done too wrong there. That's what you want from your striker. Ball's up in the air like that. So had a look where he is. Might be around the chest throat area, but I think <laughs> you've, you've got you've got to play on. It's a contact sport, Bryn. Which obviously you would have been saying had you been playing left back and that uh, arm had come across you there, Ben. 100%. 100%. Free kick to QPR, Lee Wallace will take it and gets the ball back and Lee Wallace crosses the halfway line, gives it to Wells, Bamford gets a foot in, Wells has come back into his own half to Rangel and Rangel 
down the channel for Eze and Dallas is marking him tightly and Dallas has done really well to get the ball off him and keep the ball in play and get over the halfway line and then get fouled and so that's a Leeds free kick and there's just an argument that that could be a bit more than a free kick in Leeds' favour there could be a yellow card because Dallas was making good movement forward there and it was just a little clip on the heels from Kane but the referee has a look at it gives the free kick and does nothing else you can see Calvin Phillips probably asking the same question what you were just relating to there Bryn like not too dissimilar to what Click did in the first half where he got a yellow card. But did ever so well, Dallas, just breaking free. Taken short by Phillips to Roberts. Over the top it goes. Well, it's too far over the top from Calvin Phillips. So whilst he had Dallas and Click in positions on the edge of the penalty area, he managed to find neither. And it sailed beyond both and goes behind for a QPR goal kick and we're up to an hour of this game it's Leeds United 1, Queen's Park Rangers 0, Tyler Roberts the goal scorer in the first half for Leeds Rangel back to Kelly who's under a bit of pressure from Bamford, side foots the ball up to the halfway line, Cooper wins it back for Leeds Cooper in field, Dallas is under pressure flicks it off, good ball to Click Click is held up but play continues with Leeds in possession, now Click turns towards this near side and he drops it short of Harrison and then Harrison is absolutely clattered by Kane stays down great ball over the top though for Roberts who brings it down oh. left foot volley just over the top from Tyler Roberts terrific play to control and within a whisker of giving Leeds a second goal and scoring his second goal just over so unlucky from Tyler if anything hit the target but going back to Harrison where he got clattered an absolute hospital ball, hospital ball from, from Click straight to his path. He had to commend Harrison for being brave. He knew he was going to get clattered, but he just kept the rhythm, kept the move going. Great, delightful ball over the top. And I'd say Robert's so lucky because the touch was too say, silky. Yeah, it was great. And the opening that presented itself was not unlike the Alioski opening in the, uh, the last home game here when he broke in from the left side of the six yard box. Tyler Roberts creates that. It was a fine ball to find him, but he did so well in controlling it and giving himself the opportunity to shoot at goal. More of that, please. Ball back with Kiko Casilla. Casilla rolls the ball back out to Ben White. White to click. Click to the left-hand side and Luke Ayling. And Luke Ayling down the line. This is inviting for either Costa or Bamford who gets there. Bamford now trying to force a corner kick. Does force a corner kick. Leeds United have a chance to get the ball into that Rangers penalty area again. And the draws go up from behind the goal that QPR have to now defend. Calvin Phillips goes to the far corner to take it. And gets a round of applause on his way. Still raining here at Ellen Road. Calvin Phillips to take the corner kick. In it comes now. Heads go up and it's Hoogle underneath it. Drops on the edge for click. And the volley, well, if it had been on target, it might have been a goal. It wasn't on target. It wasn't a goal. If it was on target, it'd have been goal of the season contender. But um, always difficult technique, coming out of the sky on your wrong foot as QPR make yet another change. So I think it's Mark Pugh who's going to come into the action. It is the former Bournemouth man. A lot of Premier League experience Mark Pugh has and the man who's coming off is Chair. So Pugh, I think, as an attacking midfielder, will just maybe give them an extra a bit of extra width, potentially. He drops into a central position at the moment. I think you'll probably see him popping up all over the place. Very experienced player. As the uh, goal kick will be taken to get the game underway again. Kelly goes into the centre circle. The only man waiting is Hugill. And then he's closed down by Ben White. And he's back into his own half. Still with White tight to his back. Jordan Hugill still there. Great defending Ben and White. So it has to go back from White, uh, from Hugill rather, to Hall. And then a challenge, good challenge from Click to get the ball back into the path of Stuart Dallas, who skips past one challenge. Now it goes out wide to the far side, and Tyler Roberts, Tyler Roberts up towards the edge of the box, drills the ball in, comes for, almost for Harrison, breaks out to Calvin Phillips, edge of the area. Now it's Stuart Dallas on the edge of the box, comes for Tyler Roberts, chips the ball up, Bamford header, he's offside! Patrick Bamford's offside. So the Leeds number nine had stolen in at the back post but he'd stolen in by straying beyond the last defender and the header hits the back of the net but the celebrations are short-lived mentioned about QPR going almost the same formation we're doing like a 5-3-2 last couple of minutes great signs that we're getting to grips of their formation winning the ball high up Tyler Roberts drilled across in moments before that ball's come out to him yet again fantastic ball 
very tight on the offside. I haven't really seen much of a replay where Sir Jesse might be on or off. He's just thinking, please keep that flag down, give him the goal. But um, great build-up play yet again. Easy for QPR, who attack themselves now. Well cut out on the edge of the penalty area by Liam Cooper. And then it's given away, though, from Cooper to Hoogill. Hoogill can start to build an attack for QPR again. Goes out wide to Manning on the left-hand side. Manning has Costa in front of him. Takes on Costa. Costa does really well there, just blocks the path to goal. And the ball comes off the shins of Helder Costa and goes out for a QPR throw-in on the far side. Midpoint between the corner flag and the edge of the penalty area. Manning throws it in towards the edge of the box to Wells. And then Costa's shot down by Naki Wells. And that will be a free kick to Leeds. And every moment like that as the clock ticks down. 65 minutes gone now. Leeds 1, QPR 0. As we watch on a replay chance, I think Bamford was probably quite clearly offside beyond the last man for sure. Yeah, it's difficult as a striker when you're already in that offside position. You try and work to get back onside, just didn't quite get back quick enough. Roberts plays the ball out to Dallas at a stretch on the far side. Leeds lose out and almost win the ball back, but they've conceded a free kick, which is taken too quickly for the referee's liking. Bamford it was who was a judge to have committed a foul, I think. And a free kick is to QPR, midway inside their own half, right out on the far touchline. And it will be Lee Wallace, the left back, who's going to take it from that position. And Wallace looks for movement in a more advanced position. Goes a long ball, loops forward. Cooper brushes Hugill away from the challenge. Now Roberts brings it. Oh, he's controlling it when he's absolutely cleaned out there so the ball goes over the top so the advantage is played but there's no advantage ultimately for Leeds <laughs> Where's he, why has he got his arms out of the referee like he's playing advantage when we're just giving the ball away clearly there's no advantage there that was a very late challenge on Roberts who I'm happy to report has picked himself up happily but he's still protesting that it was not a good tackle at all and no advantage was gained so it was there not a strong argument for pulling the play back then and giving Leeds the free kick when the advantage had disappeared. Just the first sign of potential replacements appearing from down below us and Hernandez of course is in the dugout for Leeds this afternoon back from injury. That's a potentially exciting option maybe. Although it would be hard to say at the moment what switch you would make. Well it would be for me anyway. Ball down the far side touchline. Helder Costa. Helder Costa's doing well in possession holding the ball up and then it's nicked off his feet but it will be a Leeds throw in and Helder Costa is asking for the ball back again sits off on a run as Dallas takes the throw in goes instead to Tyler Roberts Tyler Roberts offers himself up plays the ball into space for Liam Cooper Cooper strong run forward from the captain who has a shot and it was a Liam Cooper strike that one it um, spun off the outside of the boot the ball then flew some way away from goal and behind for a goal kick. Are you trying to suggest that's not the biggest strength of Liam Cooper's game there, Bryn? It's not what he's known for, is it? No. Let's put it that way. It's good, though. He's on the front foot. And that's what the um, these three centre-halves of ours need to be doing now between now and end of the game. Being on the front foot, like he's done there again, Coops. Different class. He's met the ball. He's read the movement of the ball well. He's intercepted and given it a short pass to click. And now Ailing has possession. Ailing goes back to Ben White. Cooper is in space. Ben White holds onto the ball. Second longer. Now carries it forward himself. Goes beyond two, three, four QPR players. And Bamford's offside again. And as the ball comes off, Patrick Bamford, he just again stepped a little too far forward of the last man there. And maybe it was the pass he didn't want from Ben White on that occasion. Maybe White should have helped him out a little bit. Free kick is taken quickly. Angel Rangel down the touchline near side. Harrison intercepts for Leeds and then gets the ball back right off the toes of Mark Hugh and carries it himself and there's space for Jack Harrison here. Bamford sets off again, tries to play, Harrison tries to play a pass inside the defender for Roberts, he underhits it though and Eze has it back for QPR in their own half. Eze up towards the edge of the centre circle in a central position, plays the ball straight into the midriff of his teammate Pugh but then it's switched out towards the far side and Manning and Manning back into his own half to Wallace. And Wallace plays the ball forward to Wells, who steps away from Luke Ayling and gives the ball back out to Manning on the far side touchline. Under pressure, Click does well, Costa does well. The pair of them do well. And Excellent. Leeds are delighted that they've got themselves a free kick there. And um, there's a potential for 
a little break in the action here because Click has stayed down. And maybe just uh, suggesting there could be a yellow card coming the way. Yes, there is going to be a yellow card coming out here, I think. And the referee decided that Ball's challenge was worthy of going into the book. And there's a big roar from the Leeds United supporters that welcomes the award, the second yellow card of the game. It was Foster and Click between them who did a really good job. And then Ball went through the back of Matthias Click and trying to win the ball back, I'm sure. But uh, wasn't the best challenge. Caught him on both legs, frankly, there. Yeah. And Click has only just got back to his feet. The scarves are up above the heads around Ellen Road. We are the champions, the champions of Europe. Here's the song on most people's lips. Leeds United supporters doing their bit here, roaring the side on to what would be another important victory. 20 minutes of normal time remaining here at Ellen Road. Leeds United 1, Queen's Park Rangers 0. Match Day Live on LUTV brought to you by Deliveroo Food Freedom. The game is almost ready to resume with Matthias Click having apparently successfully received treatment and ready to come back on from the far touchline once the free kick has been taken. And Ben White is the man who will take it for Leeds. Strikes it right-footed towards Bamford, over the head of Bamford, comes out to the near side of the penalty area. Harrison attempts to put pressure on, goes back into Liam Kelly, the QPR goalkeeper. Cooper then battles with Hugill, and then Phillips goes all the way back from the halfway line to Kiko Casilla. And Casilla has options, and he goes wide right to Ailing. Ailing in the right-back position, sees an early run, doesn't quite pick it out though, and it's just kept so lucky. by Hall there, who rather stretches his leg behind himself just to hook the ball as it looked like it might be running into the path of Patrick Bamford. QPR have it near side now. Cooper is defending for Leeds. First touch, second touch, third touch is given away. Straight it goes to Pugh, who can attack the edge of the penalty area. Steps over, drives the ball goalwards. Well, it's not goalwards, actually. It's wide of goal. He sliced it. And Leeds, just for a second there, were anxious because a bit of space opened up in front of Mark Pugh. So another QPR change. The final QPR change is about to be made. And the man who's coming on is Mlakar, and Naki Wells goes off. Former Bradford and Huddersfield man gets booze, probably because he's a former Bradford and Huddersfield man. And Jan Mlakar comes on, and he will go straight up front here. The um, Slovenian, on loan from Brighton. Played one game in Serie A with Fiorentina. And Kiko Casilla will start the game again with the... Um, goal kick for Leeds United, still the noise all around Ellen Road, fans doing their bit for Leeds push on the back of Bamford, is it maybe far side no, says the ref, the ball comes off Bamford so it will be a QPR throw in and it's taken at the spot some way further forward than it actually went out, Eze turns away from the marking figure of Dallas and plays the ball into the path of Pugh and Pugh gives it straight to Harrison down the channel Harrison slides in against Pugh and it almost rolls out of the play on the near side. Now Leeds have got a defender as Kane crosses over the head of Luke Ayling and onto the head of Jordan Hugill. And Hugill was stretching a little and Leeds have cause to be happy about that because he got the header wrong from a really, really good position. Just didn't seem to react quick enough, Hugill, because he's stood in the middle of the goal, six yards out. And for a striker of his calibre, it's a big, big chance and a big let off from us there because... We just initially lost the battle on this far side. Probably a bit unlucky with how Harrison, like the ball just came away from him. But there's, there's it in a nutshell. Can't afford to switch off because they have got the players, they have got the quality just to create something out of nothing. And like I say it's a big let off there. I think Pablo Hernandez might be about to come into the action for Leeds, judging by the roars of the fans down below us. And Hernandez has just sprinted back towards the dugout and the card is in the hand of one of the coaching staff down there. The card that we handed to the ref's assistant, or with the fourth official rather, with the substitute details as White under pressure goes wide to Luke Ayling. Luke Ayling chips the ball up down the far side touchline. Costa can't get there, but it comes back for click and then it's onto the chest of Dallas. Dallas now onto the movement forward of Helder Costa. Costa carries it up towards the edge of the area, but then he's given too much of the ball, shown too much of the ball to Lee Wallace, who nicks it away from him and it comes back up towards the halfway line. And Lakar the sub, and Leeds have the throw in, do they? Yes, they do. QPR not happy with the ref's decision. Leeds not in a real race to take that throw in now, with 74 minutes gone here. The change is about to be made. Pablo Hernandez about to return to action for Leeds United. 
potentially a switch for Click, maybe. We shall see. Or maybe even Tyler Roberts, who's making his first start of the season and who's made a telling contribution thus far with the only goal of the game. Calvin Phillips plays the ball to the halfway line and Matthias Click. Hernandez receives final instructions from Marcelo Bielsa. Harrison carries the ball infield, then turns back and starts again in the shape of Liam Cooper. And Cooper rolls the ball forward past Roberts. Too far away from Stuart Dallas. Comes back for Kelly to clear under pressure from Costa. And then Pugh chests it into the path of Hall. And then Pugh gets it back again on the edge of the centre circle and turns away from Calvin Phillips and looks for a run down this near side touchline. Gets a short ball from Angel Rangel. Rangel with the ball at his feet, making progress now. There's a chance for Kane to cross from the byline for QPR. He's in the penalty area to the near post. Cooper's done ever so well there to get in ahead of Kiko Garcia, but QPR still have the ball on the edge of Leeds' penalty area. And again, it's the same ball played to the byline for Hall. And the cross comes in and it's cleared away and Kane almost caused Leeds a real problem down this near side touchline. We have to say Pugh coming on for QPR is really making them tick now in that midfield. That you mentioned the quality he has. There's Hernandez will come on for Leeds United. So the change will involve Helder Costa departing the action. Gets a uh, warm round of applause from the home supporters for his efforts this afternoon. And Helder Costa can feel reasonably happy, I think, with his contribution to the game again this afternoon. I'm sure he wants to do more in an attacking sense, but there's more to it than that with Leeds, isn't there? You have to contribute in other areas as well if you're to um, earn the approval of Marcelo Bielsa, and he's certainly been doing that. Yeah, I think for an all-round performance from Elder Costa, arguably his best in the Leeds show, that. So throw in the aside to QPR, putting some pressure on the Leeds penalty area. Kane involved again, ball cleared up towards Patrick Bamford but he can't hold on to it now can Calvin Phillips set something up Phillips to Bamford now there's runners for Bamford pot potentially gets the ball to Tyler Roberts under a bit of pressure but Leeds still have possession just inside the QPR half Roberts now carries it further forward down this left hand side still going Tyler Roberts does really really well to play the ball to Jack Harrison chance to set up a cross from Harrison takes his time maybe takes a little too much time defender steps across Rangel and the ball goes behind it will be a Leeds corner kick at least I think initially when he did get the ball out of his feet got his head up there was only one Leeds player in the box in, in Patrick Bamford, so he took the extra touch. That's when the space went away, but he's done well to win a corner. And credit Tyler Roberts for his contribution to that moment as well. Carried the ball forward, skipped past the challenge. Leeds have a corner kick. Great time this would be for Leeds to double their advantage in this game. 13 minutes remaining here at Ellen Road. Leeds 1, QPR 0. Calvin Phillips with a corner kick now. In it goes, swung in over the head of Harrison just. Comes back out, all the way back out. Heading out to Calvin Phillips on the edge of the penalty area, near side. Gives it back into click. Now Harrison can run at the penalty area. Harrison with the ball. Harrison trying to get to the ball. Brought down surely by the QPR defender. Then the ref looks long and hard and gives absolutely nothing. Well, Harrison, under the challenge of Rangel, was it there, went down and... We'll all be glancing at the monitor screens on this occasion. In fact, the challenge came in from uh, Wallace and uh, Hall, rather. And as Harrison looked towards the referee, it seemed to be quite a strong claim there, but nothing given. I know we've only got that one angle from from behind where Hall's making that challenge, but um, almost like a challenge that you saw in the uh, the rugby this morning out in Japan. What happened in the rugby this morning, by the way? We don't talk about it, Brent. <laughs> Stuart Dallas under pressure uh, from Eze and under too much pressure from Eze because it's come at the award of a free kick to Leeds United 12 minutes remaining Dallas held his left ankle a moment there and now has stepped up and stepped away still looking a little bit tentative got a little roll of it maybe as he went down under Eze's chance and again puts his hand down to it now one to watch ball up to Bamford he's on his own on the edge of the penalty he needs help to, or does he need help he's brought down right on the edge of the penalty area Patrick Bamford he did brilliantly well there to be fair because there was nobody in the lead shirt anywhere close to him so he took it on the chest and he rolled the defender and the defender brought him down literally on the edge of the box another yellow card is shown to Wallace and that's what Patrick Bamford offers offers this team because there's just a ball that pinged to his head all he could do try and head it up in the air try and fight the defender and just try and just 
get something out, out of nothing. And that's what he has done. Well, this is a really good chance now because Hernandez is on the park. He's the man who can do things with a free kick from a position like this. It's just to the right of centre and it's just outside the penalty area. And Pablo Hernandez with the ball at his feet. Big moment for Leeds United, this. The wall is sent deep back, almost level with the penalty spot in the penalty area. Hernandez takes his time, awaits the signal from the referee. Revy stand end, stands and waits in expectation and hope. Signal given now for Pablo Hernandez. Chance to step up, chips the ball up and over the wall and up and over the crossbar. And ultimately, we gave it the big build-up and we didn't get the big finish. I thought it was a strange kind of run-up from Pablo there. Almost unlike him, whether he's been, um, obviously he's been coming back from his injury, whether he's had a bit more time to practice a different technique from a free kick, but um, no, it wasn't what he expected from the great man. So Leeds have the ball on the halfway line again and try and attack again. It's chipped up towards Stuart Dallas, intelligently on the far side, and the Leeds attack continues with the ball with Dallas down by the far side touch line and then a foot in from Hernandez trying to keep pressure as QPR have possession back again but it's given out to Calvin Phillips Calvin Phillips quickly back into Matthias Click he lifts the ball up into the penalty area and then the header back forwards from the um, right back Kane almost gives Liam Kelly a real problem it was almost like a header on goal that one rather than a pass back to the goalkeeper yeah a little bit pacey for a header back to the keeper he got away with it QPR try and get the ball, well, they do get the ball over the halfway line, Leeds deal with it quickly, Bamford though beaten in the air, Kane then loses out to Excellent. Harrison, Harrison does well to hold the ball up for Leeds United, back into his own half to Liam Cooper, Liam Cooper left foot, chips it up, looking for Bamford, Bamford's committed a foul there I think, just leaned into Rangel as the two of them were facing up and trying to make movement towards the ball, and Rangel drops the turf, and the Spaniard, well the Catalonian indeed, Born in Tarragona, Angel Rangel sees the uh, free kick taken by the captain. Hall, and it goes back to Liam Kelly. He's come quite a way out of his penalty area now to deliver the ball forward for QPR. And then doesn't do that. He actually plays it wide, almost mishits it, and it, uh, it's picked up on the far side. Leeds win it back fairly quickly, at least briefly. Click is trying to win the ball back in the midfield for them. It goes back towards the edge of the QPR penalty area. And now Rangel has it on the near side touchline, still in the QPR half. Gives it away, straight to Calvin Phillips. Phillips gives it back to Jack Harrison. A lot of space for Leeds now to work in. Harrison into the gap for Click. Now back to Harrison again. Leeds continue to advance. Harrison's into the penalty area, still with the ball at his feet. Plays the ball to the penalty spot. Still going. Harrison! Yes! Jack Harrison picks Come up on. on the misplaced pass in the penalty area. And Leeds United at last have a second goal at home in a league game. Celebrations can surely start now. Eight minutes to go. Leeds United 2, Queen's Park Rangers nil. What I loved about that, Bryn, he just drove at the heart of QPR, straight through the midfield. Played a little 1-2 initially with uh, Mateus Click. Yeah, he got a little bit fortunate when the ball ricocheted to him at the end. But you sometimes you earn that little bit of luck. You earn that bit of fortune just by your sheer determination, driving at the heart of the defence. You have to say, he was cool, calm, composed. On his right hand foot, just sorted it down the side of the keeper into the far corner. And bring we can relax. <laughs> no, oh, it, it's still too early for that, Ben. There's still, there's still, we're still the wrong side of five minutes to go for any relaxation here. Leeds United are going to make another change, and the man who scored the goal is now getting a massive round of applause from the home supporters because Jack Harrison is going to depart the action, and Leif Davis is going to enter the action. So just a little defensive move made by Marcelo Bielsa there. I would imagine to ensure that nothing untoward happens in the remaining six and a half minutes plus a couple of minutes added time in this game. Leeds have played themselves into a winning position. That much we can say for certain. Ball over the halfway line, far side. And a great challenge comes in from Ben White, but Leeds have to defend again. And then there's a free kick conceded for a foul on Manning who was trying to uh, run towards the Leeds penalty area it's midway inside the Leeds half just to left of centre so Leeds pull everybody back literally everybody back towards the edge of the penalty area 35,200 plus inside Ellen Road this afternoon another fabulous crowd here as they all will be 
free kick comes in now. Casilla comes in, he's missed it. And it's just gone beyond the keeper. And then players falling over on the edge of the penalty area. QPR end up with the ball still. And then it's misplaced from Hall, who's really frustrated that he overhit the pass, attempting to bring Kane into the play there. And it rolls beyond the right back and it goes behind. And Leeds United are more than happy for that to be a goal kick. And just for a moment there, Kiko Casilla came, got nothing on the ball at all and was stranded. But Leeds had enough bodies around the ball to ensure that QPR couldn't capitalise. I think Leeds David's got to take off a lot of credit. I think initially, High kind of thought as well, he just kind of tripped over, but has thrown his body at the QPR player just trying to block a shot. So he knew Kiko was off his line. And he's attacking now, Leif Davis. He's carried the ball forward for Leeds. This is a strong run, low drive. And there were two Leeds players arriving who may suggest to Leif Davis afterwards in the dressing room that a pass was the better option. But you can't blame him for having a go then because he got himself up from one penalty box to the other and suddenly the shot was on. He didn't get enough power in it and the keeper made a fairly comfortable stop with good encouraging signs. And he's picked up again. He's done well again. Now Bamford does have space to run into, loads of space to run into, down the left-hand side. And he can look up and he can see what's available in the penalty area. Goes in near post and he was just ahead of the runner, Calvin Phillips. But I never really felt Calvin Phillips was going to get to that before the defender or indeed the goalkeeper it was who gathered ultimately. Pew for... QPR carries the ball forward now. 85 and a half minutes gone here at Ellen Road. Leeds United 2, Queen's Park Rangers 0. Match day live on LUTV brought to you by Deliveroo Food Freedom. Phillips puts pressure on Pew. Pew goes back to the halfway line and Lee Wallace. And then Wallace gets the ball back again on the halfway line. Leeds will be happy for the ball to be in that sort of area. Centre circle now. Still in QPR territory just as Captain Hall can't see a pass ahead of himself and he gets frustrated because there's nothing on Leeds have closed down every option so it has to go back to the keeper Kelly and Kelly skims the ball into the centre circle for Hugill Hugill has Cooper tight to his back so Hugill goes backwards and then switches play out towards Rangel on this right hand side and then Eze back it goes to Rangel again Rangel trying to play the ball down the channel he does do that it's just run away from the penalty area and then he's crossed in towards the near post and Cooper does well cool header under no real pressure but he did the right thing with the ball there now Davis that's a great ball from Ben White and Davis has done really well again to nip the ball around Rangel and he just keeps it in play it is in play he had to slide but almost there he was in with a run on goal again down this near side Leif Davis so he's um, putting a real shift in in the last few minutes so now he's is. got to defend because Rangel carries the ball on his side down it's given straight to Calvin Phillips though and then Dallas goes back to keeper Casilla and Casilla Stabs the ball out wide right side to Hernandez and then Luke Ayling in possession. Now Luke Ayling looking to bring Calvin Phillips into play. Leeds heading back to the top of the table as it stands. Or well, there's space again for Leeds here. If Hernandez can thread the right pass through, he might get a second chance. Not quite. Ize's beaten him to the second ball. And then there's a foul on Ize by Calvin Phillips. And no advantage accrues, so the referee awards a free kick to Go. QPR. Going back to Leif Davis, Bryn. When he came on for Jack Harrison, I was going to say, probably more defensive-minded than Jack. But you have to say, he's bombing up and down this left-hand side. He's a real athlete, though, is Leif Davis. You have to be in this team, don't you? Certainly do. Pretty much a prerequisite, isn't it? We'd have no chance, Bruce. <laughs> Absolutely right. Calvin Phillips. Out it goes now. Tanner Rocks has got space. The great... The click had made a really good run through the middle there. And Tyler Roberts um, put a bit too much on the ball. So it was an easy catch, ultimately. But look at Click still making that run at this late, late stage of the game. Three minutes of normal time remaining. He's still charging into the spaces in the penalty area. What I love about that, Bryn, though, Click's gone, lost the ball, is out of position. But who's ran back? Patrick Bamford. And that's what he does. Yep. That's what people don't really notice. But why he stopped there, stop the counter attack, get everybody back behind the ball, and we're all in good shape yet again. Leeds win the ball back, but unfairly, says the referee. And Luke Ayling acknowledges it. So it's going to be a QPR free kick. And it's midway inside the Leeds half. It's over to the left-hand side, just uh, 10 yards or so in from the touchline. So no doubt where QPR will want to put this. Right, as they say, in the mixer. Manning is the man who's going to take it for them. Ball played in towards the edge of the box now and the bodies are in there and Leeds do well to defend that one it was a great ball in to be fair from Manning something that Ben Parker highlighted in the first half great set piece delivery 
that Leeds read it and got enough men in there to deal with it. And we're into the last minute of normal time here at Ellen Road. So a throw in for Leeds United. Down by the corner flag, far side. And uh, first man leaves ball for second man. And second man may yet leave ball for third man as well as Leeds attempt to run the clock down now. One or two Leeds fans are beginning to head to the exits. It's the first time Leeds fans have had the luxury of actually being able to leave early, isn't it, a home game? Um, for quite a long time now, given that the side has a two-goal advantage heading towards added time. These are uh, moments to be enjoyed. The ball in from the far top line is going to be a Leeds free kick. They again take short, might have taken the option of going long with it there, but they'd rather have possession instead. And it comes out to Cooper on the near side, and Cooper brings the ball back towards his penalty area. Then he's almost tackled, but not by Hugel, does really well actually, and gets the ball back and plays it into space and Click. And Click has options out on the left-hand side in the shape of Leif Davis again. Runs down the left-hand side, four minutes to be added on. Leif Davis, well, he's put an almighty ball across the penalty area, well, way beyond the penalty area, right out to, from one side towards the far side. And the ball, as they say, comes down with... Uh, a little sprinkling of snow on it there. You have to say, for the one person who could have brought that ball down was Pablo. And if he can't bring it down, which he didn't, then you knew like, there's no chance for anybody else because had some height on it, did that. Rangel in possession for QPR. We're into added time now. As the ball is carried forward, well, it's pushed up towards the hall on the halfway line. Great challenge comes in from Stuart Dallas. QPR pick up through Wallace, I and mean, there's Bamford, Bamford pursuing Wallace in a defensive position, and again, great work to try and win the ball back for Leeds, QPR have it and then lose it, and now there's space for Calvin Phillips, and Phillips, it's a cynical challenge, but Leif Davis is still on the charge, and the referee plays a really good advantage here, Leif Davis carrying it forward for Leeds, there's a player in field, it's Tyler Roberts, edge of the box, drives, keeper saves, comes back for Roberts again, still in the danger zone for Leeds, just on the edge of the penalty area now, and now maybe... He'll decide that maybe at this late, late stage, just take it towards the corner flag, kill a bit of time and Leeds win a throw-in. And fair play, credit Tyler Roberts with intelligent play there. He had the chance for crack on goal. He took the crack on goal. It was saved. So he just let the ball roll out of this near side touchline. And after the play has stopped and a yellow card is awarded for the foul on Calvin Phillips that was deep in Leeds territory but was extremely cynical because... It was just a step across the Leeds player as he tried to make forward Rangel there. Very much took one for the team. So Leeds have a throw-in down by the QPR corner flag. The vital statistic now is the clock, which says that there are 92 minutes played and two minutes of added time remaining. Leeds more than in sight of another home victory and the chance to move back to the top of the table with another home game to come next Saturday. Maybe a big week on the cards for Leeds United here. Ben White, good defensive clearance, but as far as Hugel on the halfway line, a oh, brilliant challenge, brilliant challenge from Leon Cooper. Time to perfection, Hugel gets frustrated and he absolutely clears out Matthias Click. And that's a sign of the afternoon that Hugel's had and another yellow card is brandished. It just hasn't gone Hugel's way, QPR's way at all. And Kiko Casilla has had one of his quieter afternoons, all told here, hasn't he? I think second half I saw Kiko go into the south stand, go get a cup of tea, come <laughs> back out. And sometime, I think he went for a hot dog as well. Just shows how dominant we have been as a defensive unit. So whilst um, Leeds have created chances and taken two of them, credit the defence again there, on the brink of another clean sheet, and the clean sheets could prove crucial. Because a side that's um, sometimes finding it hard to take the chances will need that bedrock and they've established that bedrock in the last few games. Stuart Dallas, he takes a little click there from Eze, and he stays down. No free kick awarded. And maybe at this late stage, it's a chance for Stuart Dallas just to take it a bit easy now. As Eze, still with the... Eze, easy. Whatever. <laughs> still with the ball for QPR. Rangel, I didn't mean it, honest. <laughs> Pew plays the ball, tries to play the ball down the channel for... Uh, Kane the full back now Bamford's got space and time again and he's only up against one defender at the moment and Click as ever offers an option and then there's a foul on Patrick Bamford and that's almost going to see his home because there are 10 seconds of normal time remaining and again brilliant bit of play really from Patrick Bamford carried the ball forward looked up 
saw what was on, there wasn't much on, so held the ball up, brought the free kick, and that's the last action of what's been an all-round impressive performance ultimately from Leeds United. The scoreline may only only read 2-0. We're delighted that it does read 2-0, but it's been a comfortable, comfortable home win as that. And really, it could have been by a few more. Yeah, the word I'd describe it is solid. I think defensively, and that's just not the back four, back five, what, what the formation was playing at times. That's collectively, mentioned Patrick Bamford right at the end there, working so hard, running back. So the team defensively were fantastic, limited to QPR, little if nothing at all. I think at times we could have been a bit more efficient in the terms of his build-up play, but every time we injected that bit of quality, that bit of tempo, we looked to cut above, really. And I think 2-0, a fair enough result. And like I say, it was just a solid win. Remember, this is a QPR side that came here with the second-best away record in the division. And it's a QPR side that ultimately haven't really shown a great deal, certainly not in an attacking sense anyway. And Leeds United can feel more than happy with their efforts this afternoon and it's all set up for another home game next week now isn't it you know well Blackburn will come here and there'll be an expectation around that game well it's almost kind of billing QPR and the Blackburn game as a double header and sometimes you can forget about the game in front of you but but now we've took care of the business with this got the three points it does become another big game because I think everyone we're expecting to get the six points out of these two home games and uh, we know it's going to be another difficult uh, fixture Blackburn coming here but if we put the hard working like we've done today always kind of say it's the old phrase in football earn the right to play and I think that typifies what we've done today we earned the right it was so hard to, to break down I think that's the eighth clean sheet of the season now and that does spread com confidence and especially the forward players if you, if you know the defenders the keeper are keeping clean sheets you know take one chance you're going you're to win football matches so the Leeds players stay out to take the applause of the fans and to return that applause as well they had good backing from the Leeds United supporters in another big, big crowd here at Ellen Road this afternoon. And everybody bar a few hundred QPR fans will be going home happy this evening. Another home win for Leeds United, back on top of the table. Leeds United 2, Queen's Park Rangers nil.